Hey guys, it's Abby and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Abby. I'm an artist and author. And today we're going to be talking about how I edit my travel photos. Now, as you know, apart from being a full-time artist and author, I love to travel frequently, capture content, and share it with you guys. So today's video is going to be a quick rundown on how I edit my travel photos because I know a lot of you have asked like how I developed my sense of photography and as well as post-processing it on different softwares and um, programs that are useful for this kind of editing. Personally, I've been traveling a lot frequently in the past 3-4 years, so over time I've learned to sort of figure out what type of editing technique I prefer best, especially with regards to what country, and at the same time learning how to weave stories into it. I find that what I like most about taking photos compared to you know drawing and writing is you get to tell stories by what you see and at the same time capture it immediately and by creating really great framing, you know, getting along with these techniques, you'll be able to sort of figure out how you want to tell your own story and view things from your own perspective. And actually my favorite part of taking photos is actually the post-processing part because this is where you can get crazy, get wild, and get really creative on how you want to edit your photos. Now I'm gonna show you a really simple technique. I am using Adobe Lightroom CC, which is pretty much accessible on your smartphone or iPad Pro or iPad, I think, yeah. But I will be sharing mine using my iPad Pro for better context. These photos, I use them usually on its own, but sometimes these are the ones that I use to add lettering overlays. So if you're curious to know on how I create content and how I do lettering on my iPad, I will make sure to link that video down below. I love being able to develop and learn new skills and at the same time discover them throughout my journey as a creative and of course discover what I'm capable of in the long run. Like, I think when I started, you know, working on this job or being an artist, um, I did not have quite a lot on my skill sets. But over time, I learned how to edit videos, shoot photos, um, you know, create content, uh, do digital design, graphic design, lettering, digital lettering. And I think these skills are really vital in order for you to sort of build your toolkit and move forward from there. Which is why today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. It offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. You can learn and grow with classes that fit your busy routine depending on what you are interested in and you want to learn more of. And it's also very affordable. As I mentioned, it is only um, less than $10 a month for an annual subscription and you can get access to so many classes, around 25,000 classes on creativity, business, design, productivity, photography, and more. Personally, I like taking classes on specific aspects that I really want to improve on, one of which is photography. At the same time, I want to know the latest trends in marketing and business, so I also lean towards taking classes about that. If you want to see my playlist, I will also link it down below to see for you to see my recommended classes that I am currently taking up and we can take it up together. So keep watching to know more about how I edit my travel videos and I will also be sharing some of my recommended membership classes that you can take up in relation to what I'm going to teach you today because I personally feel these are the classes that would be really useful in terms of building your skill set in editing photos and at the same time discovering more of your creative capabilities. So I'm going to share with you my screen showing how you can edit your travel photos using Adobe Lightroom CC. So this is Adobe Lightroom CC. I'm gonna show you the interface. Basically, it's a photo editing software that I find really useful for a lot of things, especially for my travel and product photos because the quality of editing is really, really good. So with that, I'm going to choose a photo that we're going to edit. So I take out of my travel photos and basically I put them here on my iPad so it's basically a messy camera roll as you can see here but we're gonna choose a basic one so that you can find something that you can get knowledge with. So I'm choosing this landscape photo of Munich from Germany. As you can see it's a very very straight up photo, unedited photo from my camera. So I'm using a mirrorless camera to give you an idea. So you're going to see that there are controls here on the right side. I like to click on these ones. This first one is actually for all the editing that you're going to be doing. The second one is actually 
natural filters that you can use though i highly don't recommend this because they're already pre-made and i still like to dabble with my own tools and it really depends on the photo so as you can see this photo is taken in daylight meaning the light is pretty much sufficient but there is going to be a slight difference i click the auto button and you can see that more of the details of the buildings really pop up so i did click the auto but what's nice about the auto is when you click the light here you can change the exposure edit the shadows now depending on your preferences personally i just like increasing my shadows just so it's not too dark and then making it a bit more contrasted later on i'm going to show you how to sharpen it because i like my photos very very crisp although this does not always the case for most of you so it really depends on your preference but as you know this is not the color scheme that i really like what i like doing is i go to color and this is where it gets tricky basic knowledge is this temperature thing which means when you push the when you slide the button to the right it becomes warmer towards the yellow and then it becomes cooler here on the left i like tweaking it like a little bit to the right but as you can see the change is not that big as well even with the tints so when you go to the left it goes with a greener tint which i also prefer because most of my photos are very much into the warm and very greenish feel i don't know it's just a thing that i really like vibrance is also of course making the colors vibrant but i use this more than saturation because as you can see when you do the saturation it's just too neony and it's too bright but when you do the vibrance it's just less vibrant that was ironic but it was it's actually less it's more pleasing to the eye i would say but then i don't really max it out because i'm not really particular with the vibrancy of my photo but this is where i'm going to teach you how to basically edit out the colors that you really want if you click on this color wheel here you will come up with this thing called the color mix so what happens is if you want to eliminate certain colors this is where you go so there are three types here there's hue saturation and luminance i'm going to show you what happens when i hover to the orange one now if you look at the photo the dominant colors are green blue and orange and those are the those are the colors that we're going to focus on because that's how you eliminate or add to the colors that you want so when we go to the orange you can see the range can be going to yellow and going to the red so when you move it to the side you can see the roof all of the roofs become a bit more yellow and then when you move it to the left it becomes a bit more red so i don't really like moving this around but sometimes i like desaturating the colors luminance is brightness so when you hover it to the left it becomes darker and i think that doesn't look bad at all and then if you go here it becomes brighter so if you were the type who's interested in pastels this would be a good fit personally the biggest thing i like tweaking is actually the sky so you can see there's like an aqua blue here and like a darker blue i settle for the aqua and dark because as you can see the sky is more of this blue so when you edit it to the left you can see that the sky sort of turned into a turquoise and that's actually pretty nice but then if you do max it out it looks pretty much fake so what you want to do is lower the saturation because the sky is not that bright luminance is also a go if you want to have you can see the clouds are more prominent here you go to the aqua and i think this just does a little bit of minor more for the roofs of some of the some of the architectural buildings that are actually a bit in that color i just darken it a bit so you don't want to reach a point where it becomes too edited because i think that's just too much but as you can see as of now the photo is really really bright it really depends on what you want to do you can always go back i'd say i could like yeah lower the exposure a bit if you want to achieve a filmy effect it's also nice to do a bit of the less contrast you can see that there's a lot of like detail that's being opted out but then it still looks very dreamy so if you also hold your finger for a long time you'll see the before and you can see what's happening basically we've edited a lot of it so i think now i'm kind of happy with how it's turning out i'm gonna go to effects i don't use a lot of the effects except i like to do greens if i want to make it a bit filmy it really depends though but now i'm more towards a bit of grain and a bit of clarity clarity is more of the details like you can see it makes the image a bit darker so it's like inserting a lot of blacks in it i don't really prefer going overboard with this maybe just like 10 maybe or 11 
And then lastly, the details are really, really important. If you want crisp photos, you can always put up the sharpening and you can see that the photos are really, really crisp. What's great about this is you really see the quality of your camera as well. That's why I really recommend getting a good camera because the camera will be able to detect all the details that you won't be able to edit in. So now I feel that it's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. If you want to do some cropping, you can always go to the other elements in order to crop the image but i think i'm gonna be happy with this one so what's nice about this is you can crop it out you can use this as a blog header or a cover for your video and it's really really great so that's it i'm just gonna click done so it's added here as you can see it's all in chronological order that's why i have a lot of stuff going on so what i like to do is i click this arrow here save to camera roll and go to maximum available just so the highest file size will be saved and now you have your saved photo. So I hope you found that quick tutorial useful for you. Don't forget to click the link down below to get access of two months of Skillshare Premium Free. That's over 25,000 amazing classes that you can definitely learn from. Let me know in the comments below also what you have been learning and what you have been discovering about yourself this year creatively and you know just whatever you are doing because I think anything that you're doing is really really valuable and of course you always have to make things you always have to you know exercise your creativity and I think this is such a great way to do that now in regards to the travel photo photography classes that I want you to take and my personal recommendations I recommend two classes so the first is Lightroom Classic CC a total beginner walkthrough now I showed you some of the basic features of Lightroom but apart from that if you have a specific area that you really want to um, focus on in regards to editing like get light go more light in edit more of the color correcting because personally I do color correcting but it's not also the advanced level I would probably just base it on my you know my instincts and my taste but again if you really want to focus on a lot of different aspects of Lightroom then I think you should take this class because it's really important for you to sort of get a whole foundation and then at the same time pick out stuff that feels necessary to you. Now the second class that I want you to uh, look up and take, which I will also link down below, is Lifestyle Photography, Capturing Inspiring Visual Stories. Now when you are like me who posts mo mostly photos and visual content on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Facebook, and basically everywhere around social media, also my blog and newsletter, you would know that visual storytelling is really an important aspect of photography. It's not just about clicking and like posting. There's really some sort of um, science, I would say, or like for me, there's such a big meaning in being able to convey your message through the photos that you create. So if you're looking forward to taking more travel photos or lifestyle photos, for that matter then this class is a really great way for you to get into it dive into it and be able to experiment on not just what you think you would like to uh, focus on with, with regards to lifestyle photography again I always like taking in all the knowledge I can get then I sort of filter it out and be able to sort of be in this space where I could just say like oh okay then I know that this type of photography is what I want to focus on this type of subject is what I want to do and this type of editing is what I want to have as an output and the final result so yeah make sure to click the link down below again for two months free of Skillshare premium and thanks so much for watching this video this has been Abby and I hope you learned something today thanks for watching make sure to like share and subscribe to my channel for updates on lettering journaling travel photography and basically anything that regard that is related to creativity so i'll see you guys on the next video bye